This is weird. It's a good time, brother. Saving lives. You know? The whole podcasting thing? No. Sitting and listening. Yeah. No, I, I like the podcast. I've, I, I've listened to quite a few of them. Not all the way through, but. Yeah. But some of them are pretty long. But some of them, like, what, what I recommend is that if you can't get through the whole thing, um, do a little bit later on. Because I uh, listened to um, Peter's yesterday all the way through yeah. to the end. It was really good. Yeah, I haven't listened to Peter's yet. <clears throat> there we go. Here we are. So do you wonder what we talk about up here? Uh, yeah, at times. Yeah, no, we just talk about whatever. It's just, you know. Whatever comes to mind. A, yeah, it's more like a conversation about, um, you know, recovery, your story. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we like to be real comfortable. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, that it's not like um, like you're getting up in front of a podium and and, and telling your story, it's it's more like, you know, we'll ask you we'll ask you some questions and mm-hmm. like that. You know, you I'm know. not I'm not nervous about the podium. I I've done no, you do great at the podium. Yeah, this yeah. right here makes me nervous. Yeah, no, this is <laughs> actually if you're like great at the podium, then all of a sudden you're like doing a podcast. Yeah. It's totally different. Totally, totally different. different. Mm-hmm. And you've never done it before. Uh uh-uh. uh I you, you've <laughs> never had you've never podcasted before. Nope, never. Yeah, I've only done it like what are we like 12 times 12 13 yeah my t- in my life and uh friday i um i hosted uh my first podcast without shane yeah <laughs> and i was so nervous because like i feel like if i don't have anything to say shane does right? yeah yeah so he's your backup, backup. yeah my yeah, backup baby. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah wow so i um but i had a uh, Ken Seeley co-host with um, with me, so I had a special yeah, a special good. guest co-host. I like Ken. Yeah, he did really good. But Eric, Eric, we we, we Eric was the guest, and um, he just he just like went for it. Mm. So good. So tell us about uh, tell us about your uh, your early days before recover before uh, recovery. Where'd you grow up? So yeah. Um, I grew up in North Orange County, a uh, little small town, small city called La Habra. Yeah, I know La Habra. Yeah, um, so that's where I grew up at. Uh, life was different back then. You know, uh, I remember being a kid uh, where we used to live. It was it, This was even before there was streets, paved streets, or even sidewalks, you know. Uh, so so life was pretty easy back then. It was it was uh, difficult, I guess, for my parents, you know, raising five five kids. Um, but yet there was a lot of free land where we could go to uh, streams and and fish and go play with the cows and tease the bulls. You know, that that was a good life. That mm. was a good life back then. Uh, but then uh, you know. Life got difficult for me, and I'm saying for me because I can only speak for me. Uh, when I was around nine years old or ten years old, um, you know, they 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 say they say in life that life life isn't fair, and things happen to good people, things happen to bad people, uh, and I believe the bad people, uh, and and what I mean by that is is one one day. Coming home from school, I was in fourth grade. I think I was almost 10 years old. Uh, came home, and my little brother would usually uh, win me home. And this particular day, I got home, and my mom was, she was like, I don't want to say going hysterical, but she was freaking out. My little brother wasn't home, so her and I went down towards the tracks. Again, it's uh, nothing but open land, you know, and, and I could see way, way down down the ways, I could see a little head bobbing, going up and down, and, and I looked, and I go, that, that's my little brother. So I said, Mom, don't worry, here comes little brother, you know, and, and as I was doing that, I was backing up, and I accidentally hit my mom's uh, right arm with my head, and I remember she fell to the ground, um, and yelling, and people, uh, they called the ambulance, the ambulance came and picked her up, took her to the hospital, 
she, later on that evening, she came home with a cast, and she was okay. But a couple of days later, she got sick again and went back to the hospital. Only this time, she didn't come home. She died. Oh, man. So, you know, being 10 years old and having the neighbor across the street call me. So I'm the middle child of five. I have an older sister, Connie. Uh, she's the oldest. And the second one would be Ramona. She's second to the oldest. And then me, then my little brother, Albert, and my little sister, Janie. So the neighbor called... Uh, the, us three younger ones and told us that my mom had ju had died and uh, I I couldn't make uh, I couldn't understand that I couldn't understand what that actually meant and and I don't think I ever cried you know it was just a shock you know um, I, I, I and it didn't really become reality until she wasn't home that night she wasn't there in the morning. Uh, you know, coming home from school to an empty house and, and just just watching my little, even my little sister, the baby, you know, uh, uh, putting a chair up against the stove and scrambling some eggs just so she could eat something, you know. So, so that, that's when reality started hitting on me, like, you know what, my mom's gone. She's not here no more, you know. So that was difficult. And to add to that, you know, after we buried my mom, um, obviously I didn't go to school for about two weeks. And my mind was already in a very dark uh, state, uh, depression, even though I didn't know it back then, but I know I was now. Uh, but what really, what really made me feel out of place or uh, different was going back to school after we buried my mom and, uh, you know, the kids looking at me, pointing fingers at me, whispering in each other's ears and pointing at me. So I, I, I took that like, uh, you know, you're making fun of me, you know? You're making fun of me. So the only solution I had was violence. Yeah, we, we kind of touched on that the other day. You know? Yeah. So violence and always, always going to the principal's office. And back then they used to whoop us. They used to have a, a paddle <laughs> with holes in it, you know, and uh, uh, that, that became a routine and it got to the point where, you know what, it, it only stinks for a little bit, you know? So, so I started getting uh, comfortable with pain, you know, pain of losing my mom, uh, pain of, of being rejected, of being abandoned, uh, you know, I mean, I can go on and on with, with the list, but... Pete, where's your dad? Excuse me? Where's your dad at this time? Right now? No. Oh, my dad. So, thank you for, for bringing that up because my dad, you know, he, he was a hard worker. He provided for us. He took care of us. He made sure we had food, we had shoes, we had clothes, we had a roof over our head, but he wasn't there when my mom died. And what I mean by that, he didn't, he didn't tell me, I don't know if he told any of my other siblings, but he didn't tell me that everything was going to be okay. He didn't reassure me that life was going to be okay, that he was there. So he wasn't there emotionally, you know, but he was an amazing dad. He was a, a, a there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good uh, that I got from him, you know. Um, he was a hard worker. He was dedicated. He was committed. He wouldn't, you know, stop. Nothing stopped him. He was a very strong, uh, old school uh, individual who was born in Mexico and migrated to the United States, and and uh, uh, he just took took the bull by the horns and just started raising us up, you know. But there was a downfall to that because his way of dealing with losing his wife, my mom, was alcohol, and he was the drinker that could go all week without having a drink, but come Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it was a different story, you know? Yeah. And he would drink to the point where I would come home at, from playing and I would find him passed out on the floor, in the hallway, in the bathroom, you know, just everywhere. He was just passed out, drunk. And uh, to me, that was, uh, you know what? I don't know what to think about that because... At 10 years old, 11, 12, I, I really didn't understand what he was going through. Right. You know? Uh, but he did take care of us. 
He did take care of us. Now on the weekdays? Ah, he was out. Totally different story. So, you know, I, I knew he was drunk when he would call me boy. You know, that, 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 was, that was his way of, be, of showing some type of, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for Toughness here? or authority or? No, no, no. It was more of an intimacy. Yeah, intimacy. Mm, intimacy. Yeah. You know, when, when he would call me boy, he was being nice. He was oh. being, you know, yeah. what do you want? You know, how can I help yeah. you? And, and what I did was, okay, well, I, I got him. You know <laughs> what I mean? I got him, so I would get money from him, and I'd go to the store, buy me candy bars, whatever. What, you know, 10, 11 years old, 12. So, yeah, I was already manipulating my dad. Yeah. You know, taking advantage of him being drunk. Right. You know? Uh, so that, that, was, that was my early life, you know? It, it, was, uh, it was dark. It was painful. It, it hurt. It, uh, it, it actually pointed me into a very negative lifestyle you know yeah um but little little did i know that 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 you know again being in the fourth grade and and i uh i kept everybody away from me i didn't allow people in i didn't uh i i was i didn't have many friends you know and one thing i gotta add is is uh you know my dad he he took in his uh his nephew which would be my aunt's uh, son uh, so he lived with us, and he was part of the neighborhood right there. He became part of the gang, and uh, uh, we didn't know that he was on drugs, alcohol, and what have you. So he actually slept, slept in the same bed with me and my little brother. Um, and one night, he, uh, I woke up. I, let me say it like this. I woke up to being fondled. I woke up to feeling uh, something was going on that shouldn't have been happening to me. You know, right. he, 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 he molested me that night, sexually molested me that night, and uh, the molestations happened every night that he did come home. So that, that really put me in a really dark uh, state of mind. And again, you know, violence was my uh, coping tool. So with that said, you know, Going to school, um, there was one 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 guy that lived in the in the in the block um, who I allowed into my world, and uh, we befriended. We became we're still friends today, actually. But uh, I would go to his house after school instead of going home, and he had a lot of boxing uh, equipment in the backyard. So I started just playing around with the with the with the speed bag, with the big bag, and uh, uh, little did I know that his dad was a boxing trainer, you know. So so his dad started training me, started training me in boxing, and and uh, which ended up being a a bad thing. Why? Because then I became good with my fists, right? You know, and and uh, I wasn't afraid of anybody. I don't care how big you were. You know, I I was quick, I was fast, and I knew how to dodge and hit and bob and weave and. And I'm taking you down, you know. So, so that was that was a huge coping skill, like I said, uh, boxing and using it for the wrong reason instead of going to a gym and and uh, uh, you know looking for a looking at, at a, in a boxing career. But no, that wasn't the case. That was just something that was helping me with my angers, you know. Uh, but then you know life turned again for. Uh, it got a little. It got a little deeper than than just boxing uh, or fighting. Uh, I think it was in the the, the summer of of uh, before going into seventh grade, which back then it was. I guess what you call it today would be middle school. Right. You know, back back in, in when I was there, I think they called it. Uh, we called it junior high. Junior high. That's yeah. exactly what it was. You know, junior high school. So, so there was, by that time, I, I think there was like four of us that, that, that I allowed to become friends. And we were out one day and, uh, you know, smoking cigarettes. First time I smoked a cigarette. It just, just the head change that, that uh, came with it, you know, um, I liked it. You know, I, li- I, liked, I liked the head rush. So I continued to smoke, you know, and then uh, came the, the marijuana uh, which changed it even 
more, you know, right. it changed it deeper. And so we started smoking pot, you know, cigarettes, pot, then came the alcohol. Uh, so cigarettes, pot, alcohol, you know, and then just trying anything and everything. I, I didn't care if I liked it, I would continue to use it. If I didn't, I wouldn't use it. But prior to going to seventh grade, there was four of us with me making five. Um, I forgot who it was, man, but he said, hey, why don't we start a gang? And we all looked at each other and said, all right, fuck it, why not? So we all had a free-for-all and jumped each other in, you know, and, and uh, we did that, and next thing you know, we uh, named our, uh, our gang, which was West Side La Habra, you know? Uh, and by the time we got to, uh, I want to say maybe ninth grade, man, there was like maybe 250, 300 of us. You know, there was a lot. There was a lot. Uh, by that time, we had to uh, call our name or, yeah, our gang was, it was West Side La Habra, but we, but we put a G at the end, meaning grandes, which means big. You're right. You know, because now, now we have different chapters. Uh, we had Walnut Street. Uh, we had Alta Vista. We had uh, Campo. We had West Side La Habra. We had, uh, I mean, just on and on and on and on, is, different is, chapters. Is this, is this gang still uh, active? Yeah, they are. Oh, wow. They're still out there. <laughs> this is something I actually didn't know about you. Yeah, I didn't know that you started it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, and they're still out there. They're still doing what they do, you know. And um, that, that took me into a deeper, crazy lifestyle, I'll say. You know, being a gang member and... Uh, defending our turf, uh, fighting with the enemy. We, and what I mean the enemy is, La Harbor is, is a small town. It's a square mile. Beach Boulevard, you know, a mile. Uh, Harbor, one mile. Whittier Boulevard, one mile. Then you got Imperial Highway. You know, it's a square mile. Right. But there was two sides. You had the east side and the west side. So I was from the west side. So the east side were our, our enemies, you know, and we was always fighting. Yeah. Always fighting. And then we have L.A. County, which is right there, too. So um, I'm, I'm not going to name any neighborhoods, you know. But, yeah, we, we, had, we had our share of, of uh, riots with them, you know. Right. Gang, gang fights. Cool thing about it, I'm saying cool because back then it was cool. Right. Uh, there was no guns. You know, we, we, we fist fight, uh, bumper jacks, uh, tire irons, uh, chains, you know. That, that's the way we got down back then. Right. Know? Uh, that, you changed, that changed though, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, down, that's down the road for you. That's, yeah, that's where I got my nickname. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's where you were going. Uh. No, I was thinking about I was thinking about uh, the the bullet you have in your uh, spine. Oh, that guy too, you know. <laughs> that's um, the one I was thinking about. So I'm going to ask you: Have you ever been shot at? Yes, many times, and I actually got a <laughs> bullet in my spine and in my uh, my hip. So this was on a Friday the 13th, and um, up the street there was a party. So when I got there, there was already a lot of people there. Back then, they, they had, you know, these lights, something like that, but they were strobe lights. Oh, yeah, strobe you lights. You know, right? Yeah. So yeah. lights, they were flickering in the backyard, music playing, people doing the, you know, whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's <laughs> the only dance Shane, that Shane knows whoop, how to do, whoop. put that You know, <laughs> right? Pete, I want to ask you something before you go on. Where was your aunt while you were being while you were being taken advantage of by her son? So at that time, uh, she lived in Mexico. Mm. Yeah. So so actually, Shane, thank you for asking that because uh, my cousin he was running a muck in Mexico, so he actually uh, came to the United States illegally. And uh, my dad took him in because uh, the cops over there were looking for him. You know? Yeah. So so he was living with us, and and uh, yeah, I mean, this I, has been be becoming a common theme on our podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's happened to me, yeah. happened to you, yeah, happened to a few other of our podcasters. Yeah. It's part of our story, yeah. you know, and it's like uh, as as men, we never. I, I never talked about it. Absolutely. I was just like, this isn't, this it wasn't okay. I used to have, I used to have thoughts of homicide. Mm. 
you know, uh, to the person, you know. Oh, yeah. It, t- it took until I was like 30, uh, I think I was like 30, 34, 35. Yeah. I think uh, 30, 32 wow. before I said anything to anybody. Mm. Yeah. But man. That, 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 that's, that's a touchy, touchy uh, thing to talk about, though. Right. You know, um, you know, and, and I don't want I don't want this to sound like I'm 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 being a, a judgmental or, or even racially. But because I know that it comes with with uh, my culture, you know, my my dad was strong. My dad didn't show any type of weakness uh, to anybody, you know. So if we cried, he you know, he called us names. You know, he called me names in Spanish, you know, right. uh, which. Uh, all, all that did was made me just, uh, and forgive me for saying this, you know, but it, it, it made, it made, it pushed me away from him. It pushed me not to want to be around him. Uh, and, and I'm even going to use the word hate, you know. Um, I had a lot of angers towards him for calling me these names. Uh, and one of the, one of the ones that really pissed me off was when he would call me a, a pinche pendejo. You yeah. know, which, which that really means is you fucking idiot. Yeah. You know? And uh, I actually believed it, you know? So so being molested, you know, to talk about it, uh, to me to me was a, a weakness. Uh, I'm not going to let you know. I'm not going to let anybody know. I'm going to take it to the grave with me. Um, and, you know, that's... What I did for a long time is I, I buried it so deep that uh, I don't I don't want to say I forgot about it, but it was buried that deep where uh, it it didn't it didn't keep me up at night. It didn't uh, give me the anxiety. It didn't give I didn't feel the pain anymore. Why? Because I was already using drugs. Right. You know, the drugs, the partying, the lifestyle, uh, it numbed everything. And uh, it, Yeah, and, that's how, and the, during those times, you probably didn't even ever really think about it. No. You know? No. And I don't want to stay on the, on, the, on, on, the, on the story too long, but just because sometimes, like, you know, uh, people hear it and they may think that we're glorifying, but there's nothing, there's nothing gl- glorious. There's, there's nothing uh, great about the things that, uh, happened to us or the things that we've done, um, you know, what's great is the things that we, we've done to get to where we are today. Mm. But I do want to touch on, um, you know, your drug of choice, uh, your, um, you know, your time spent in, um, prison, Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. Um, before we move on to your recovery, because your recovery is amazing to me, Mm -hmm. you know, I met you shortly after yeah. uh, you got clean and sober yeah. and um, what you've done from that day to where you are today mm-hmm. is amazing Amen. to me. Yeah. You know, um, but tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, your time in prison and how you got there and your drug of choice and you don't have to tell us everything. But right, right, <laughs> right, right. So, you know, like I said, you know, being a, a gang member and, and doing the things that we do to uh, back up our turf to uh, uh, not just the turf, but the homeboys, man. You know, I I, uh, I would do anything for them. I'd take a bullet for them and they would take one for me as well, you know. So there was a bond there. There was a, a family uh, structure there for me. Uh, so, you know, one, one night, one night uh, there was four of us driving in a van, and uh, we actually stopped stopped at a at a Seven Eleven to uh, get some alcohol. I think we were seventeen years old, sixteen, something like that. And walked into the store and asked this gentleman to buy us some beer. And he looked at me and uh, uh, he 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 actually laughed and called me. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna say it. He called me you fucking wetback. No. Oh. You know, so that pissed me off, and I just said, wow, okay, you know. So I went outside and uh, told the homies, and, uh, yeah, we had a gun, and uh, it was actually a sawed-off double barrel side-by-side, side, you know, and dude came out, and, uh, mm, you know, 
something happened, we pulled the trigger, uh, dude got hit in the chest. Uh, so, um, we all got caught. We all got caught. I think uh, one of them might have got away, but there was three of us that got caught. And uh, that turned into a lengthy uh, prison sentence, you know. Um, and and dur during that during that that incarceration, you know, um, you know, be being in the Orange County Jail and 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 not knowing what's going to happen, uh, going to court, not knowing what's going to happen, and being surrounded by other. Uh, men who have already lived that lifestyle, you know, they, they, they pretty much have an idea of where you're going, you know, so they were already grooming me, they were already prepping me and, and uh, for what's coming up and, and, and going to Chino, Chino uh, State Prison, you know, uh, first thing that they do is they, the sergeant um, asks you, who do you run with, you know, so by answering that question, I drew the line right there, and they have it documented on everybody, you know. And I don't care if you're white, you're black, you know. They ask you, are you, you know? Back then, it was it, they they called them woods for the for the for the white mm -hmm. white people, you know, the right. white folk. Uh, for us, it's it's uh, northern Hispanic or southern Hispanic. So I said southern, you know. So th so that drew the line. That drew the line as to who I run with, what I'm going to do, and who I'm going to represent. You know, so being that young and doing the things that go on in prison, uh, uh, you grow up pretty quick and, and you learn to uh, not feel other than anger. You know, that's the, that's the only emotion you can feel is anger, you know, and, and a lot of uh, uh, violence, you know, a lot of things I'm not proud of, but I had to do them, you know. Right, and this was a different, a different era than yeah. and even like right now because it was... Is the eighties? Yeah. Early eighties. Early eighties. When this happened? Yeah. Yeah. Eighties. Things were uh, things were popping off in there. It was it was a lot different then than it is now. Uh, back then, you could say that the convicts uh, ran the you know ran the prisons. Um, that's not the case now, but but regardless of that you know that that. That was my introduction to the California Department of Corrections, and uh, that that turned into be a, a another lifestyle, um, you know. And trying heroin for the first time, um, that was the answer to all my problems. Was this in prison or? Uh, it was. It was. It was out here. It was out in the streets. Okay. Uh, but that was like after I got out, you know. How long did you do on your first term? Uh, almost 10. Whoa. Yeah. And then 10 years later is when you tried heroin for the first time? Yeah. So, so that was the answer. But, you know, what, what, really, what really took, uh, what really got me was, was uh, back then they called it a, a John Belushi. Yeah. Which is a speedball, which yeah. is heroin and cocaine. Cocaine, yeah. You know, and, oh, my God. That, that, uh. That thing just took me to the dirt, man. Dude, you, you know, it was, it was. It was life changing. I, I couldn't, I couldn't use one without the other. Right. You know, if I had, if I had the heroin and I didn't have the cocaine, I'm going to go get me some, her, uh, some coke, you know, yeah. and I'm going to, and I will. And I, and that's, that's what controlled me, you know, but you long, know, for, for a long time, huh? How long? I mean, I mean, Chad, I mean, you know, that, that, that was the beginning of, uh, of a criminal career, so that criminal career turned into about 35 years. Uh, I remember I asked my parole officer one time if I could have uh, copies of my rap sheets, you know, and I added them all up. It was it was about give or take, you know, about 35 years that I've done total, Jeez. you know. But hair, you know, addiction it, it 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 was for 37 years, right? You know, and um, I didn't think. Uh, you know, I did things. I, I did things that I'm not proud of. Um, you know, I hurt my family, stole from my family. Uh, I chose. I chose that lifestyle over. Um, I want to say this girl, who uh, I thought I was gonna spend the rest of my life with. I left her pregnant. You know, and uh, 
She wrote me a Dear John letter when I got to Chino. And I, I, even to this day, I haven't seen her, you know. So we have, we, I do have a son uh, with her. Uh, he's a grown man now. He's, I think, 40 years old. But uh, Have you met him? I have, Chad. I have. And, and uh, it was... It was weird, you know. Uh, but watch before before I get to my son, um, that prison career, that criminal career, lasted like thirty five years. Um, I want to say it was the last time that that I got arrested. That uh, uh, back then they called him uh, the governor, you know. Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ar Arnold. Yeah, right. I'll be back. <laughs> you know, so so they they started this uh, uh, drug treatment facility within the California Department of Corrections, and I was at Corcoran, um, and uh, you know they uh, they came <coughs> to my cell, my counselor talked to me, and I says, yeah, you know we have a substance abuse facility over there, and uh, we just started, and uh, you qualify to go. So I looked at him and I said, no, I'm not going. <laughs> no, you, no, I'm not going to no treatment facility. You know, I, I, and, and why, why I said that is because I've already heard of stories of what type of men are there. Yeah. You know, so uh, I don't want to get, I don't want, I don't want to get into, into that, but, right. uh, but there's a certain type of uh, individual who, might have an R on his jacket, right? You know, and uh, we don't, we don't, we don't associate with with them. And uh, uh, so the R stands for rape, you know. Uh, so, so long story short is uh, he told me, well, you're gonna go willingly, or we're gonna hog tie you and take you over there, you know. So in other words, he's telling me that you're gonna go regardless. You know, so I kind of stood back and I, and I had to really think about this, man. And and uh, again, I'm not gonna uh, disclose too much information, man. But um, I uh, I I was really good friends with. Uh, I'll say it this way. With the Godfather of Orange County. Yeah. And uh, I got a hold of him, and I told him what they wanted to do, and uh, you know, his response to me was. You know, he, his response to me was, you know, if you really want to change your life, go ahead. You know, you, you're not, a, you're not one of us. You're not a made man, right. you know? So there's nothing really keeping you from wanting to change your life, you know? And, and, and he ended it with saying, uh, you're more valuable to me out there than you are with me in here. Yeah. You know? So I, I, I took that and I ran with it, you know? And he goes, but, but. If you go to this certain yard, don't even get off the bus, you know. But if you go to G yard, th the other yard was F yard. This one was G yard. If you go to G yard, go ahead and program, you know. And and I'm saying, don't go to F yard because there's where you had all them people that uh, uh had do have R's and uh, maybe ex law enforcement, you know. Uh, uh, and Northern Hispanics, you know, right. over here on G Yard, there wasn't any. Um, so I ended up going to G Yard, and I was able to. That was the first uh, God thing. It was Chad. It was Chad. You know, and, and and I didn't see that though. I didn't see that though. But but look look, look at this. Um, before I was transferred from where I was at to to the other yard, you know, I I, I don't know if people out there that are listening to this uh, might understand uh, uh, different levels in spirituality, you know, but uh, I had an encounter in my cell, man, and, and to me at the time was, I was, it just blew me away in a, in a, uh, to the point that, that maybe I thought I was going crazy, you know, uh, because I came back from breakfast and I went into my cell, my cellie, he went to work or school, wherever, um, but I was looking out through the bars, and, and it was 8, 8 a.m. in the morning, and, you know, it was shift. The guards were, were changing shift. Uh, people were going to work, going to school, what have you. So there was a lot of movement going on. But uh, I had, like, this uh, blackout, 
and I lost all conscience of where I was at, but I heard this little voice, and uh, that little voice said, uh, I can't do this anymore, you know? And when I heard that, I, I woke up, and I said, whoa, what the heck was that? Because it was, it, was, it was so clear, and yet, and yet, uh, and yet, uh, ah, deep, deep in my gut, I knew, I knew what that voice was or who, who, who was, where that voice came from. So I looked up towards the sky, you know, up towards the, I mean, I looked up, couldn't see the sky, but I looked up and, and I laughed and I went and I got to my bunk and I got on my knees and I said, God, if that was really you, man, you're going to have to show me here, man. You know, you're going to have to help me to make the rest of my prison sense without getting in trouble and prepare me for when I get out, I don't have to come back to this place. Two simple requests. You know? right. um, so long story short is I went to this substance abuse facility in, in, right there in Corcoran. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of people who, we're really taking taking this program serious. Why? Because a lot of them were lifers. A lot of them had been incarcerated for 25, 30 plus years, and they were fighting. Uh, you know, and, and what I mean by fighting, they they were trying to do everything they can in their power for whenever they go in front of the board that they can present to the board uh, reasons why they deserve to be uh, released. Yeah. You know, uh, and here I am with just you know, time, I still got a parole date. Yeah, was it a parole violation? or No, it was a, it was a sentence. Uh -huh. yeah, it, it was a sentence. Um, it was actually the least time I ever done. Um, I got caught with, oh, my God, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing, you know. And uh, being a, being that I have four strikes, they always threaten with, uh, with 37 to life, but I, I knew they were going to do that. Uh, this time I only got 32 months with 80%, mm. you know, but you know, long story short is only, only. Yeah. it's amazing how we start to talk, yeah. you know, you get used to it. Yeah, you get used to Only 32 months. Yeah. Wow, it's a lifetime for me. It's crazy, bro. Yeah, you get I don't think Shane would do well in prison. Yeah, he would. They would mold him. Huh? They would mold him. Mold him? Yeah, they would mold him. Where would, where would he hang out? With the woods. He would? Well, he's bald, so he might go skinhead. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can't do that. He can't do that. Why? Because he's Jewish. It don't matter. As long as you're white. Yeah. Yeah. And I bring, yeah. And I bring yeah. in some money. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, never mind. <laughs> we don't have to go there. No, we, we're, we're not. We, we're not. We're it's, not it's, we're it's not a good place to no, be. No, it's not a good place to be. No, it's not a good place to be. And I don't, don't want to get in trouble. No, so yeah, it's, it's 30, 32 very months. It's not, there, 32 right? months. It's nothing for you. It's it's whatever. Now you're ended up, you see all these lifers in recovery. Yeah. They're trying to. Trying to get yeah. their lives They're back. They're changing to, their lives. Changing their lives. But you know you know what the ticker for me was? <laughs> was back back when I was fighting my first case, I ran into this 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 older, he was a little older than me, uh, a homie, and uh, him and I, him and I clicked really good. And he he took me under his wing. He's the one that groomed me. Um, anyways, he was fighting a life sentence, and he did get uh, convicted. But I saw him there on that yard, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, when you go to breakfast, everybody has everybody comes out of, out of your building, and you got to go only one certain way into the chow hall. Everybody's walking the same way. You can't run, and you go in one door and out the other door, and you walk right back to your back to your housing. So he was in front of me, and and I called him, and and I go, man, like I said, you can't run, but he was walking pretty fast. I go, where are you where are you going, man? And he and he goes, he goes, hey, it's, it's you know, Spencer, homie, Spencer, I mean, sorry, yeah, was, you know, the Spencer, man, but uh, they just called me for release. I said, cut it out, man, you're a lifer, you ain't going nowhere. Next thing you know, it was on the intercom. They called him and they said, "Report back to your, to your unit and uh, uh, with all your belongings, report to R and R." Wow. So he actually mm -hmm. got released. You know, he got released, and and uh, that that just gave me a little more of a, of a hunger. You know, to, to try this man to give this this uh, treatment program a, a chance, and and I did. And and next thing you know, is I started a. Uh, uh, Taking this, uh, this is the funny part, Chad and uh, Shane. Uh, 
I I enrolled through the through the help of my counselor to a nearby uh, uh, college, community college, and I took this Bible course, this Christian substance abuse uh, counselor course, you know, uh, and and I did it via via mail, and I completed it, and I got my certification. Uh, then I became uh, a facilitator, group facilitator there. So I, I started doing doing things that I've never done before, learning things that I've never even heard of before, relapse prevention. What the heck is that? Right. You know, they started speaking this language that was just so freaking weird. Right. When you're an addict and, you, and you've never gotten clean, you don't even know what a relapse is. You never heard of it. Oh. Just but think I, that this is what I'm gonna. This is what I've done. This is what I've always done. Yeah. I'm hooked. Yeah. Never even thought about it at all, at all. You know, what, one thing. One thing I did learn, and I and I even share today in the groups that I do here is is, uh, you know, I heard uh, mental roadmaps. You know, and the facilitator, the way he explained it was, uh, you know, it's like back 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 in the back in the days when you would buy a car. They would have that, uh, what, what do they call that map thing in, in the glove compartment? <coughs> Thomas me. Guide. The Thomas Guide, right? Yeah. So he, he, he said it this way. He said, you know, that, that thing has to be updated ever so often, right? Yeah. Because they, they, they build highways, they close highways, uh, communities are growing. So they have to update that. And he said the same thing with your brain, with your mind. you got to update. In other words, you got to get off that, that uh, never-ending cycle and do something different. You know, and, and that's what I did, you know, and, and that made sense to me. And I said, OK, so I did that for about a good 18 months, this this uh, program. And uh, I it wasn't a 12 step. It wasn't a faith based. It was uh, more of a uh, uh, they call it a behavior modification program. You know, a lot yeah. of a lot of uh, cognitive behavior therapy, a lot of dialectical behavior therapy, uh, um, meditation you know stuff like that and and uh, to me that was foreign it was weird you know uh, but i did it anyway you know and i did i was willing to learn uh whatever i don't care man i i'm, I'm i want to i want to stay out of this place i want to stay off of drugs i don't want to go back to that old lifestyle you know and come uh, my parole date um they called me to r and r and Here's here's where the enemy starts uh, playing with your mind, with my mind. You know, I got to R and R, got my my dress out, my clothes, and and uh, I'm sitting there, and I'm all of a sudden the thought came. You know what? No, I'm not gonna go because they offered me a, a treatment after after the program, mm -hmm. six months. Yeah. You know, so I signed up for it, and I went. I I I. It's over here in San Clemente. And I, I figured, you know what, I'm going to go to San Clemente, the beach area, man. They, there's no homies over there. There's no heroin over there. Oh, there, man. There's all, there's all only surfers, and, and all they do is meth over there, you know? Yeah. Boy, was I L wrong, Little did man. you know. Uh, little did I know. Uh, there was a bunch of homies over yeah. there. Yeah. I actually ran at that time, uh, during that same time frame, mm -hmm. um, a treatment center in Dana Point that had the, um, it was called the Sasco Program. Right. And um, after you completed the substance abuse in prison, you would go to, uh, they would give you six months. Yeah. That's Saska. Where I, that's and then where you I could, went. Sign, and then you could, you could get another 90 days, right? But I know where you went. Yeah. You went to mainstream. I did go to mainstream. Yeah. And I, and I at that time was, well, I mean, I might have been at Hope by the Sea by the time you got out. Yeah. Um, but we, uh, uh, prior to that, um, my first job was at the Wits Inn. Mm. in Dana Point I've and heard we of it. and we had the and we had the Saska program. It's actually how I met Cindy. Mm. Same same story. She came out and bam, we've been we've been uh, you know, partners. Yeah, partners. Yeah. Doing this deal yeah. together and you know, I gave her a job at at the Wits Inn and then, you know, she was with me with the opening wow. of Hope by the Sea and wow. So 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 that program actually changed a bunch of people's it lives did. Did. i remember though that yeah there was a lot of homies in uh <laughs> in mainstream yeah, yeah. we used to have the narcotics anonymous na meeting down yeah. in uh uh dana point um the morning at, meeting at the harbor yeah at the harbor yeah, yeah. i remember that the friday the, the friday night at mainstream yeah. in the mainstream's building 
I went there for so many years. I used to take my daughter when she was just a baby. Wow. Life changing. You know, one one thing that was weird is when I left Corcoran for the last time so far, um, we stopped off at a at a gas station, you know, to, uh, to use the restroom. So I got off to use the restroom, and as I was using the urinal, you know, I, I was looking for the, the handle to flush it, you know, and, and uh, there was no handle, you know. Automatic. And, but you know what? You've I never did, seen it before. I've never seen it before in prison. You got the handles. <laughs> right. You know? So this gentleman on the next year, you know, he says, excuse me, sir, but just step back. <laughs> what? He goes, yeah, step back. I step back, and I was like, <laughs> thing flushed. So I go to wash my hands, and then there's no knobs. Right. And I'm going, okay, now this is weird, you know, really weird. So he goes, excuse me, sir, but just wipe your hand, you know, swap your hand by it there. So I did, and all of a sudden it turns on. I'm going like, no. But but the point I'm making is that scared the shit out of me. You know, it, it really it really it really impacted me to put fear in me. Uh, like, what's next? You know, what's coming next? But long, anyways. After that, after that, Chad. Yes, I went to mainstream and and uh, you made it. I made it there. You know, my my first thought was hit Orange County first red light, jump out of the van. I'm gone. Yeah, but I there was just something holding me back that I just couldn't do it, man. I couldn't do it. Uh, I don't know if it was fear. I don't know if it was. I, I I think it was more fear of. I know what's gonna happen if I jump off. Right. You know. But we always also have fear of the like the unknown. Like recovery can be scary. Yeah. Like it can be scary. You can slip right back into the the, the comfortable misery of of addiction. Yeah. It's easy to do. Yeah. And then you're stuck there again mm. until, you know, an intervention of some sorts. And, you know, people like, uh, you know, certain people, their intervention is always the uh, Orange County Sheriff's yeah. Department <laughs> or, you know, or other parole. Yeah. Parole office, yeah. stuff like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know. So you made it to mainstream. Yeah, I, I made it, you know, and and that that first night that I got there, you know, they some of the guys tell me, hey, you, man, you better go to sleep early, man, because we got to go to Alcoholics Anonymous meeting uh, by 7 a.m. We got to be there at 7 a.m. I said, Alcoholics, I ain't no alcoholic, man. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an addict, you know? <laughs> you know, and they go, well, you know, you, there's there's a there's a NA meeting right across the street, you know? So uh, I, I, had to, I had to really pick and choose uh, what meetings to go as far as when uh, Narcotics Anonymous, because there was a few that... Uh, Bad seeds. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, I do. You know, so it kind of it kind of gave me a. It, it disheartened me, you know. It, it 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 man, what am I doing here? You know, I don't need to be here. Yeah. You know, if I want to get loaded, I'll go go back home, go back right. to the neighborhood. But these people were getting loaded right there in the parking lot or waiting for the vans to come and and offer dope, and I was going like, no, nah, man, I don't need this. No. So I started going to Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, but as time went on, you know, got a sponsor, started working the steps. The steps or the um, steps? Steps. It, it doesn't matter. The steps or the steps? Yeah, either or. Yeah. You know? Um, and and I, I I took my sponsor's suggestions. I Did I want to do them all? Heck no. You know? But I did it anyway. I, I, know, I knew that I needed somebody to help me, or better yet, I needed, I needed a father figure to yeah. help me to... to uh, to learn how to live out here in society, you know, without being under the influence or depending on a some some type of substance to make me feel okay, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I did that and. Uh, what was your first sponsor's name? It's it's my only sponsor. I still only have sponsor. Him. Yeah, his name is Gino. Gino. Gino T. Nice. Yeah. So he 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 knows me better than than my family. You know, he's one that I I trusted, uh, and I'm saying I trusted because. Uh, he lived a similar lifestyle I did. He was, uh, he's actually Sicilian. So, uh, you know, he's been in and out of prison. He's got a family, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So he, him and I really clicked and uh, I, I just, I, I trusted him. I trusted him and, and I trusted him with my life and I believed that he was going to 
lead me and guide me and direct me into the into the right way, you know. And through him, through him came a lot of other uh, men and women, you know, to uh, that helped me with this uh, this recovery journey, you know. And and some something that I didn't think people were gonna do is, and I'm saying it because uh, again, here I am with that prison mindset of uh, man, these white people they they don't care about you, Pete. You know, you walk into an AA meeting, NA meeting, everybody's white, maybe one black and maybe one Hispanic, you know. So I said, no, nah, man, I'm in the wrong place, you know. But boy, was I wrong, man. Mm -hmm. These people did not judge me because I'm bald-headed Mexican, you know. They all, they all were there. They all were there to support me, to help me. And, 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 I, and I thank God for each and every one of them. Yeah, know? we all come together for, yeah. a, for a common theme. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. this thing called ism. Yeah. doesn't matter what it is. No. You know, and, and uh, here, here's the funny thing is I ran into a, I ran into somebody that I'd done a lot of time with uh, in, uh, at Pines Park. Yeah. You know, uh, NA meeting, and I ran into him, and, and I, I looked at him, and I go, Danny, is that you? You know, and he goes, hey, you know, so anyways, we started talking, and I go, what are you doing, man? He goes, man, I got seven years clean, man. I go, Really? He goes, yeah, and I work over here at this uh, treatment facility, the Hope by the Sea. And I said, wow. And by this time, I'm in sober living, you know. And 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 I, uh, I asked him, hey, are they hiring over there, man? He goes, you need a job. And I said, yeah, man, I need a job. So I gave him my number. I got his number, and I didn't hear from him. You know, six months went by, I didn't hear from him. So I just said, whatever, man. But by that time, I was already going to school. Yeah. You know, I was right here at Saddleback, Saddleback uh, College. Uh, and I was going to school, and one day he called me, man, and he goes, <coughs> excuse me, he goes, you still need a job? And I said, yeah, I mean, he goes, put on, get dressed, look, put a tie on, you know, nice clothes. He said, nice. put a tie on? Yeah, he told me to put nice. a tie on. And uh, he goes, you got, you got an interview at 3 p.m. So I said, whoa. So I got on the bus from San Clemente to right here on... Uh, Calle Arroyo? Yeah, you know, and yeah. I got off, and excuse me, I'm thirsty. Yeah, no worries. And I walked in there, and uh, your mom interviewed me. Mm. Penny. Penny. And uh, I showed her the certification that I got in prison because it was a Christian substance abuse counselor. She looked at that, and she goes, where can you start? I said, well, whenever you need me to start, you know. So I started that following Monday, mm. you know. And, and let's go back to... That, ex that that prayer that I had in my prison cell when I heard that voice, because yeah. I said, help me to make the rest of my prison sense without getting in trouble and prepare me for when I get out, I don't come back. And then all of a sudden I started taking this course and I wasn't even a Christian yet, you know? Uh, and anyways, that certification got me my job here. You the know? jail cert. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah, so... You know, that's that was the beginning of a... Uh, and your first job was? First job, Chad. First job ever? ever. No, not ever. Oh, okay. Not ever. I mean, you know, I've had, I've had, I've, I mean, I've had a few other jobs, you know, here and there, but they, it, it was, I was, I was too young, man. I was already involved in gangs and what have you, man. Right. But, um, so they didn't mean nothing to me. This was a life-changing experience, you know. Uh, were you, were you, were you a house manager? I was. I started at uh, Anzar. I was. I was. Uh, Live in. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Things were different back then, right? Uh, Compared to how they are now. A lot different. A lot yeah. Different, you know, but, uh, how many years ago was that? Oof. How many years clean you up? I got fourteen years and nine months. Fourteen years, nine months. It's yeah. a long time. Yeah. June tenth. June tenth is my my uh, clean date, sobriety date. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mine's June 9th. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. I didn't know that. There you go. Right? I don't, yeah. I don't really talk about mine because I don't do the whole, I don't, I just don't do the whole, um, I, I try to live by example today. Absolutely. Instead of um, talk about my time mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I just try to be a walking example of um, how you can live a better life. And it's been working for me, yeah. you know. You know, I've been around a long time. I 
Yeah, I do know. You've seen me even go in and out a yeah. couple of times. Yeah. But you know, the good thing about that is is that you come back. Yeah. You know, you've you've been you've been uh blessed with the opportunity to come back, you know. And yeah. And others don't, man. And oh, I, a lot I, of them I don't. really and I don't take I don't take that for, <laughs> for granted anymore, you know. Because uh, uh like I could easily be one of those people. Yeah. I could have easily, you know, like like I'm I'm more scared of uh, scared now than ever in my life because I see what happens on a daily basis with yeah. with fentanyl. Uh, you know. It's like it's like the worst thing ever. You actually did the uh you were the um did the pastoral thing for my for for my uh son-in-law. I like to call yeah. him my son-in-law. They weren't married yet, but they would have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, and he, I did. he was like a he was like a son to me. He was, you know, I loved that kid. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I was honored to have uh, been able to speak that day. You know, and uh, I mean, you know, fourteen years, nine months, a lot has happened in my life, uh, good yeah, and bad. You start from the bottom, though, like yeah. you, you entry level position. Yeah. Tell us about that. Tell us, tell us about the, you know, the 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 progress because you're now you're you're the tenured uh, lead. Mm. Um, case manager yeah. plus the um head of our christian track program at hope by the sea so not you know, at the hopeaholics but at hope right, by the sea right you know so that that was uh something that i really had to uh look in a way of helping others you know um i think i think when i got hired i i already had like 18 months clean and sober um, and I'm saying 18 months because the last year in prison, I did work the steps. Uh, it was through mail, but I, I, I still worked them, right. you know, with another another man. So so I had an idea already of, of recovery, uh, but working at Hope by the Sea at, at the detox facility, uh, that was something totally, uh, I got scared at the beginning because dealing with medications, learning how to, uh, you know, uh, write write them write down their uh, how do I say what they call now Chad uh, log them log the medication count the medication and and so it was a whole training experience for me to and and uh, Candy used to call me too uh, hey, you made a mistake no. man, you made a mistake you know <laughs> but 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 it was good man because you know it, it helped me to understand more of what my responsibilities are you know. Uh, so I I ended up doing house managing at at detox for about four and a half years. Yeah, you know it was about four and a half years. But at in the same time, um, I was also uh, co facilitating the Christian group with uh, Pastor Dale. You yeah. Know? Uh, so it was it was that's that's you just talked about two people that passed away, and I just wanted yeah. to uh, kind of recognize them because Danny yeah. uh, got you the job at Hope by the Sea. Yeah, he did. And uh, he recently passed away. Yeah, I know. Was it last 2022? Yeah. Yeah. So he was a great guy. <sighs> he was good a good guy. guy, man. And you know, one of the one of the good guys. You know, I, I, I will always, anytime I'm asked to share my story or even like this in a podcast, I, I will always talk about Danny. What happened to yeah. him? Yeah. Uh, you know, Dan, Danny, Danny, uh, <sighs> We, I don't know. He just, he relapsed. Um, he went out on, he was, he went out for a while and he had health issues, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then, uh, pastor Dale, uh, passed away. I don't know exactly how many years ago, but it was, it was, it was six. It's been, it's been six now, yeah, six, years. six years. We actually have a chapel here, chapel at Hope by the Sea yeah. that is dedicated yeah. to, um, because, uh, pastor Dale started the Christian track at Hope by the Sea mm -hmm. along with Bobby. I mean, they, they, it was, they, the two of them. Right, Bobby's idea. Right, um, but Pastor Dale, you know, built the program up to what it was yeah. and what it is. Right, not what it was, what it is. Still is. It still is. It's still a living, breathing. Uh, it's one of my favorite things because, like, you know, the um, the cafeteria, um, or if I want to go anywhere downstairs, I yeah. pretty much have to walk by the chapel. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and one of my favorite things is hearing you, um, you know, in the chapel. Uh, running the group and you know sharing sharing the sharing the word with the um with the clients in the yeah. group i mean it's like 
I, I love it. And you love it. I can tell you love it. Your passion is is there every single day. You bring it. Yeah. You know, you bring you bring the heat. And and like from from where you were, what you just told us. You know, what you just told us. Mm-hmm. And now what you're doing today is it to me it's 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 simply that's a fucking miracle. Yeah. yeah. Most people don't get this opportunity. Yeah. To do this. Yeah. And you're doing it. You're living um, you know, you're living the dream. You know, and you're helping others and um, you know, everybody I don't have a, I've never had a client say I hate Pete. Right. <laughs> never. Never. You know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe when you're trying, when, when I'm like, Hey, you you need to, you know, talk to this client and they, and they're a little, you know, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, not yeah. doing well. Right. You know, they might not like you for that moment, but like, yeah. you're good at it. You know, and uh, people respect you and they respect you because of that story you just told us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but not only because of that, they respect you because of the man that you are today. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a kind, loving um, you know, God fearing man for lack of better words, yeah. you know, thank you. And you're very consistent every single day you post in the, in the alumni yeah, page every yeah. day, every day you post the, the, um, morning meditation is that the narcotics anonymous narcotics morning, anonymous. morning mm-hmm. meditation. You know, I, I, ha- I have to, Chad, you know, and, and I'm saying I have to, because I, I, I don't want to get in any way, shape or form complacent, you know? Um, everything that I learned from the 18 months that I was at Corcoran at that facility to what I learned at Mainstream to what I learned with my sponsor to working uh, th- this program of, of recovery, you know, I'm still doing it today. Right. From the moment I get up to the moment I go to bed, I'm still doing the same routine every day. You know, And I, I'm not going to be that one having 30 years clean and sober and taking a new a newcomer chip, you know, or a newcomer tag, you know, uh, uh-uh. you know, my sponsor told me, you know, I, one time, one time I went to a meeting and he says, see that guy right there. He just had 30 plus years and, uh, he's taking a new, a new chip. I said, well, then what the heck am I doing this for? That's going to be me. And he goes, no, Pete, if you do a thorough step one, thorough step one, that ain't going to be you, mm. you know? So he goes, what are you powerless over? Oh, people, places and things. He goes, no, that's too, that's too uh, uh, generic. Yeah, you know what I mean. Everybody says that. And he goes, "What are you powerless over, man?" I said, "I don't know. Help me." And he goes, "Pete, you're powerless over the first drink or the first drug use. As long as you remember that, and you don't drink or you don't get high one time, you'll be okay." So yeah. I I keep that in mind. You know, I took that to heart. You know, so so and I and I share that with with everybody. You know, in in the Christian group and and wherever wherever I'm at. You know. Um, powerlessness man i i had to be, i had to be i had humility had to set in for me to admit powerless and that's you our know? connection right that's the connection yes that's the opposite of addiction right connection yeah. and it, it, it it's I, I just have to tell you like like i i see your tattoos right and and i and i mean this is probably the first time i've really heard this story the full your mm-hmm. full um story i i know about you you know um but man, if I would, if I were, if I would, uh, would meet you, and you just had on long sleeve shirts, and I didn't see your tattoos, um, I would never know. Mm. And you were, you know, yeah. because the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, uh, it, it's just, you're just a good guy. Yeah. You know, I. I, I used to speak the language of depression. I used to speak the language of anxiety. I used to speak the language of abandonment. Actually, I still do. Of abandonment, the language of rejection, the language of not being good enough, uh, low self-esteem. And I can go on and on and on and on. But you know what? What changed was when I started to learn to speak the language of recovery. Yeah. You know? That that, that changed everything, you know? and And once I was able to develop a good foundation in my recovery and and here's where it got a little spiritual because I wasn't one to be a spiritual person you know even though I had that experience in prison but working these steps man something happened something happened in my inside of me step three you know made a decision to turn my will in my life over the care of God as I understand him you know 
I told my sponsor, I said, dude, I didn't come to treatment to look for God, man. You know, I don't want to do this, man. He goes, Pete, just believe that I believe. And I said, all right, man, I'll turn my will and my life over to the care of God. How you understand him? Because I don't understand him. Yeah. You know, so long story short is I, I uh, he asked me to, to memorize the, the third step prayer of Alcoholics Anonymous. And it starts off with, uh, the first word is God. You know, so I quoted that, and next thing you know, I just started crying and crying and crying. And I'm not talking crying. I'm talking those big, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because, I, you know, I, I, if, I can, if I remember, you know, I never cried ever since my mom died. So you're talking about 30-plus years without ever, ever crying and shedding a tear. Yeah. I think I forgot what it was like. You know, but when I, when I did that step and, and, and those sobbing, deep, down cries came out it was like uh like like a lot of weight was just uh lifted off my off of me you know and uh, that's when i started uh my my sponsor would challenge me he would go okay so now i want you to to pray you know dude i don't know how to pray man you know but but long story short is i did it and i talked to god however however it came out i don't care and then he said okay now i want you to read the bible Okay, so now we pray, read the Bible. Okay, so now I want you to go to, to a church service. So I started, he started guiding me into the spiritual walk now, and, and uh, that changed everything. And then working here uh, in the Christian program, uh, going to Celebrate Recovery, remember every Friday? Yeah. Pastor Dale and I would take the, the clients to Celebrate Recovery, Saddleback Church, and, and that's where the spirituality really shifted because now we're working the steps uh, through the Bible, you know, yeah, and that 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 had a totally whole different uh, impact on me. It's kind of cool how like uh, celebrate <laughs> recovery pulls uh, the um, Bible verses yeah. right out of the Bible for each step. Each step. Did you know each that? Change? No, I didn't. Each step. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. I'd like to have a look at that. Yeah, you can look I, it up. I, yeah. I, I, I got a, I got a guide. I got a folder in my office that that has that had it's already the correlation. It's, it's already nice. It's already there. Pastor Dale gave that to me. You know, and yeah. And there you know but you know um the good thing good thing now uh, and i'm saying good i and i'm going to use the word blessed here is a lot of those men that i left in prison um, lifers mo most more so the lifers um you know let me see it was before before this last time the last prison since i did i did time in Cal calipatria uh, it was a level four yard there, and uh, and uh, I did time with a lot of guys there. But uh, my 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 little brother, he passed away uh, four years ago, and um, one of his best friends called me and said, "Hey, uh, he goes, hey, Pete, uh, I got it. He's a, he's actually a uh, a a nurse in in L.A., and he goes, uh, hey, I got a guy here who just got out of prison." And uh, I told him about you, and, and he wants to talk to you. So I said, all right, give him my number. So long story short is that Saturday, uh, I called him, and, and we talked, and, uh, and uh, you know, started talking a little bit here, what he went through, and uh, he was a li he's a lifer. And he goes, hey, wait a minute, man. Are you Pistol Pete? <laughs> you know, and I said, wait a minute. Now, who are you? You know, and he goes, it's me, Steve. He goes, yeah, you were in Building 3, you were in Cell Block. I said, whoa, dude, you know too much now. <laughs> you know, but long story short is I did time with him, you know, and, 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 uh, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, since that moment on, I've been, I've been uh, uh, more, li more like his accountability partner. Uh, we would, we would talk every day and every day, you know, I would send him Narcotics Anonymous stuff and, uh, Long story short is, is uh, Mother's Day was around the corner and he was going to go visit his mom up in uh, Las Vegas. And he went and uh, next thing you know is uh, he called me and he says, uh, hey, hey, Pete, man, you know, I met with my mom and, and one thing she said was now I could go. Mm. And she died like three days later. Oh, wow. And, That's uh, cool. Yeah, but, you know, it, it's like she knew he was going to come home. He was a yeah. lifer. You know, he wasn't supposed to get out. But he got out, and I was there with him, and uh, I actually was there to support him. I went to the funeral, and, and uh, 
you know, he, today, ch check this out. He, he was a lifer, so he went to a transition home in, in L.A., and uh, he started working there, the program there, getting sponsored and everything, doing the, working the steps. And that program actually paid for his schooling to become a, a case manager, drug and alcohol mm. counselor. Nice. So he completed it. They hired him. You know, I think about a month ago, maybe two months ago, he called me and he goes, hey, Pete, you're not, you're not going to guess what. And I said, what? And he goes, I start Monday. I'm working for the parole office. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's a good story. Huh? Yeah. So he came out with nothing yeah. and went into a transition with, you know, I mean, you know, it's hard for someone being incarcerated that long, straight. Straight. To be let out into the world and not have any hope. You know, and they gave him some hope, wow. man, you know, and, 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 uh, he's a lucky one, bro. He's, a, he's one of the lucky he's one ones, of the lucky man. ones. You know, and, and not just him. I, uh, I talked to another cat that was with him. Uh, he was from Anaheim. He, he had like, he did like 30 some years and I knew him too, you know, so th these two guys are doing great. But where I was really going with this chat is, is that I've been getting, uh, m messages on messenger from some of these guys that are locked up and they and they've they've asked me, Pete, man, can you send me some uh, narcotics anonymous literature, some alcoholics anonymous literature? Could you look some sober livings or transition homes for us? Can you send me some Christian material, you know? And so far this day, Steve's one of them, he got out. Uh, I'm not gonna mention names here, Chad, but uh, this other one, he got out from doing 33. Um, the other one got out from doing 28. One just got out from doing 25. And uh, so all these all these men from that lifestyle from prison, you know, they've all reached out and asked for some type of help so that they can present to the board so that they can fight for a release date. And every one of them have gotten out cool. so far. Wow. Yeah, we'd love to you see know? some of these guys. We'd yeah. love to bring them down, some of these L.A. guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Any of them that are willing to... You know. I, I know Steve is yeah, yeah. the one I'm that works on. for the parole. He he That'd already asked me, and I said, you That's know what? Cool. Let me ask my let me ask my my yeah, boss for yeah. sure. You know what? I, I'm I'm gonna hook him up. I'm, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll get a hold of him. This is what it's about because everybody's story um, will touch a different person's yeah. life. Yeah. You know, um, like uh, Bailey's story. You know, yeah. reaches out to um, clinicians. Absolutely. You know, uh, um, Peter. Uh, who we just had on, um, his story reaches a whole different level of professionals who suffer from alcoholism, mm. who, um, you know, are functioning. Yeah. Like I wasn't a functional addict, you know, so I was, <laughs> I was not functioning. Like I had, I couldn't hold a job right. to save my life. Right. You know, I was the worst of the worst, you know, gutter, uh, drug addict. Uh, and, and we couldn't sell dope. No, I sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I was no good. Right. You know, I was not good at that. That was not a thing. <laughs> so, you know, um, my story reaches different people, you know. I, but I like to hear the fact that, you know what, we do recover. And there's, there's, there are so many people that are so successful mm. after, you know, having this, um, ism suffering yes. from this yes. disease yes. dis-ease yeah. somebody said dis-ease who was it frank oh frank this. yeah look out for frank's podcast yeah. today you can't you can't say it you can't i can't say it really right now because yeah. it's being released today but we're wow. recording yours today we good stuff though man yeah uh, so you know and i don't know how much time we got left chad but uh you know i i go to i go to church you know um and and i'm i'm at this church because because of my wife, um, you know, it's her, it's her younger brother who's the head, the head uh, uh, pastor there. And uh, my wife and I, um, we started off there uh, doing evangelism. You know, we'd have a prayer tent and people would come in and get prayer, what have you. But then uh, the pastor asked us to uh, Wednesday, Wednesday nights, we do Bible study with the young teens you know, nice. And uh, a lot of these, a lot of these teens, they they grew up in church. A lot of them never experienced uh, any 
uh, addiction, any alcoholism or, or any, you know, anything. But you do have those that have depression and anxiety, you know. Yeah. So we're, we're able to work with them. And uh, on top of that, we uh, there's people that come to my wife and I uh, uh, and they request, you know, uh, can we talk to you? You know, uh, you know, I, I got a. Uh, my brother, my dad, my mom, whoever, cousin, uh, they're they're strung out on drugs or or alcoholism, and uh, we we get them help. We place them. Right. You know, if they don't got insurance, we got resources that'll take people without any 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 type of uh, financial uh, uh, means. You know. Yeah. Uh, some of them sober livings. Uh, some of them they ask for counseling. You know, and I got I do have a Christian substance abuse counselor certificate, so I'm able to. Uh, do one-on-one sessions with them, you know? Nice. And so, I mean, I'm just always busy. Yeah. You know, life's good. Yeah. Life is good. You're in the, you're, you're in service work. Yeah. 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 You know, his, his whole life is service. His that's all he does. Wakes up, breathes, eats service and everything. Yeah. That's what, that's what you do to survive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, that's well, awesome. I'm proud of you, Pete. Yeah. You good know, for you, brother. Well, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta thank, I gotta thank hope by the sea because, this was the stepping stone to a, a career. It was a stepping stone to uh, living a life uh, with meaning, you know. Yeah. Uh, helping these individuals, and 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 I think now, right now at this time, is is uh, working with uh, with uh, with the military vets, you know. Yeah. Because now now you're talking with a whole different demon. Yep. Yeah. You know, and 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 to. To learn how to, how can I help you? You know, how can I help you? A lot of them hate God. A lot of them are pissed off at God. Right. You know, but yet they do come in and ask me for prayer. You know. Yeah. When they come to the gym, they they come and look to my office and and request. You know, can you pray for me, please? You know, you know, of course I can. You know, or a lot of them, you know, I'm mad at God. I just yeah. fu- freaking hate them. You know, and I said that's okay. It's okay. You know, it's okay. So it's it's. It's, yeah, I just, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for for everybody here, you know, our administration. Uh, Cindy played a huge role. You yeah. Know, um, in, in, in learning how to be a, uh, a good uh, case manager, and she was my mentor, you know. Pastor Dale was my spiritual mentor, and and uh, he hand, handed down the the what do they call it the the mantle to me. Yeah, you know, and uh, man, I just you know, if you were to tell me fifteen years ago what I'd be doing today, I would have told you you're crazy. Right, you're crazy. You man. spent what thirty years of your life in jail? About thirty five. Thirty five years of your life in jail. Yeah. Prison. Prison, not jail. Yeah, we like to call it prison. Prison. 35 years in prison. Wow. Yeah. You're one of the few, Pete. I am one of the few. You're one of the few. One of the few, you know. Um, but, you know, the good thing is a lot of these dudes that are doing life, they're given the opportunity now to get out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think those are the ones that are going to, uh, well, you know, maybe not all of them, but there's going to be a majority of them that are going to make it. Yeah. You know, all they, all they need is that one, that one open door. Right. You know, uh, I mean, like a lot of, a lot of my homeboys asked me, man, how did you do it, man? I, I said, dude, you know what door opened up and I walked in, man. I just, I did something different, you know? Yeah. You know, and one of my favorite sayings is, right? uh, if you, if you, uh, if you, no, let me get back to it. If you, if you do what you've always done you'll get what you've always got what you always got oh yeah 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 if you do what you've always done you'll, you'll get, get what, what you've, you've always, always got, got. Yeah. so if you do something different mm. then you'll get something different i'm glad we waited that was good yeah you guys actually waited yeah i was like go ahead and say something yeah, no, no, else i wanted to put you on the spot there but you came yeah. up quick on that one bro <laughs> <laughs> i thought we'd wait another 30 seconds i would grind him but he came through <laughs> yeah come through sometimes like i I'm, I'm about as good as uh george bush when it comes to sayings he was horrible <laughs> he was horrible. Did you, he was horrible when he would do a speech and he'd be like they made a they made a song about how he couldn't like come up with like the right sayings for stuff it's kind of funny 
I got to have them right here in front of me written down. There's a lot of good ones, though, man. I, I, I use, like, Narcotics Anonymous and Alcoholics Anonymous yeah. sayings all the time in my in my personal life, in my professional life, in yeah. my relationships with other people. Yeah. You know, I, I, I have a, on, what do they call that, that in, Indeed or LinkedIn? Yeah, yeah. So I get, I get a lot of sayings from there. There's a lot of uh, people that I follow that... Uh, they're all, they're all about they're like life coaches and what have you. So right. I I get a lot of stuff from there, and I oh wow okay, you know, and I'll I'll try to apply it to my life. You know? yeah. yeah, screenshot it, repost yeah, it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, we appreciate you coming, Pete. Man, yeah, that's was that was a really good story. Yeah. Incredible. Well, thank yeah, you. Incredible. I had a great you time. Know, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I hope somebody that listens to this, uh, it was for you. Yeah. yeah right. There is somebody out there. Yeah, wait, I, know it. Mm-hmm. I believe it. That's gonna hear it. Well, we all touch somebody. Yeah, yeah I mean, this stuff goes on on, on YouTube and yeah. Spotify. It's and here forever. Yeah. In thirty years, forty years. There was a lot of good, no. a lot of good little thing, uh, uh, stuff that you said that will, that'll be um, really good. Uh, we call them shorts. Yeah, yeah. Short clips. Yeah. 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 All right. Good stuff, man. Well, yeah. thank you. Again, that was fun. Man. Appreciate it. Well, it was yeah. Fun. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Boom. <laughs> Michelangelo. We didn't talk to Michelangelo. No, we didn't. At all this was a good day. one. That's why. Because Pete was talking. Pete was just going on.